Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I once again am aiming for orbit and we've got one rocket being built, this Nick 2 that could potentially make it but it's a tough call on that one. Uh, we also have some technology that I started to unlock at the end of the previous episode that might help but this early avionics is probably the more important part so um, yeah, that's gotta be a long time to wait, 182 days. When you take a look at our contract to make orbit here, we've got a year and 140 days, so it's quite a risk to wait all that time. We could be building rockets during that time. Yeah, so I guess we'll launch a few more Nick 2s, or Nick 3s, we'll, we'll upgrade them if uh, the Nick 2 doesn't work. Yeah, I guess we'll have to try out a couple of Nick 2s before before we even get to that. Alright, so let me build another Nick 2. Hmm, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right at all. I hope the other Nick 2 doesn't have this problem. Seems like this ended up on the wrong node. That's not a good sign. Should be down here. Why was it clipped in in the middle there? Okay, well that's a little bit worrying. Don't know how that happened. But alright, let's let's try this again. Now these do not come cheap. They are uh, 2,000 funds apiece. So yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's starting already to be a struggle. So the parts I want are the other uh, probe parts. Right, we have a very heavy guidance unit, 0.6 tons, which is a lot heavier than some of the early probes. Uh, when you think about Sputnik and uh, and Explorer, so that's that's a pain. But it gives us 20 tons of control. But when you do the math out, that means that the just to launch this guidance unit up, the rocket would have to be able to launch 3% of its mass into orbit, which is a tough call for these sorts of engines. Uh, sounding rocket avionics package is much lighter, but doesn't give us avionics. Uh, th yeah, I mean, I don't know why it's called Sounding Rockets Avionics Package when it doesn't give us avionics, but anyway, we have the uh, this guidance unit here, and we're using that avionics package up there, but that's not the best arrangement. If we could get a lighter avionics package, uh, a lighter guidance unit, I mean, that has SAS in control, that would be much more preferable, and then we can just build the rocket off of that. But anyway, uh, we'll build another Nick 2 right now. Looks like we're actually completing supersonic flight ahead of the first Nick 2 launch. The air technology is also being researched at the same time. It's not, uh, it's not interfering with that. All right, and let's roll that out to the launch pad. Let me just quickly take a look at our contracts. We really only have this artificial satellite one. The sounding rockets medium seemed like there were issues with that judging from the previous episode. X-Plane Low. We have to hold between those altitudes for three minutes, it says. Sounds like a job for the Beechcraft Bonanza. But we don't even have propeller engines, so I don't know what the point is. But anyway, um, and those are crude. Okay, I think we'll try our first nighttime launch and we'll use ambient light adjustment to fix things up for us. Okay, here we go. SAS is available and on, throttle is up, and let's see if the engines ignite. Yes, they do. We do have fins on this one. Gotta take SAS off and have Smart ASS do it. So that it doesn't stop the roll. We're starting to roll here. And again, I want it to roll. I want it to be sort of spin stabilized.
I don't know how well Smarty SS is gonna handle that though. It's getting a little bit dodgy on the roll. Uh, it's getting out of whack. Let me stop the roll. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let me turn SAS off. Turn SAS off. Let me manually control this. Okay, booster set. All right, boosters are separated. Yeah, looks like if I want to spin stabilize anything, uh, Smart ASS is not going to be part of that equation. Gonna take smart ASS, I mean uh, SAS off because it's slowing to roll down, and I want to keep it rolling actually. Okay, wow, well, that's slow. Okay, set and ignition. Okay, ignition is good. All right, well. We just need this engine to orient us and then we're going to be on the upper stages. I don't think we have enough for orbit. Just just shy of that. Okay, getting ready for separation. We'll see how this works out. Okay, set. And ignition. going out of whack already. Delta V-wise, we're not too bad off. Control-wise, we're all over the place. Okay, final stage. Well, that lit, but it's uh, it's pointing straight down, or close to it. Uh, now going back to prograde. This one, it's a little bit. No, it's just wandering off all over the place. Oh, it's because of the airflow. We're actually getting into the thicker part of the atmosphere, so it's getting a little bit more force towards the prograde vector. This is gonna get hot. Up, oh, poof. Up, oh, there's still the core here. Please tell me this is gonna explode, because probably ought to. That's a battery down there. Batteries don't make for good heat shields, I think we all know. I think we got a. Oh no, that was just a stage destroyed, because stage recovery couldn't recover it. Well, somehow the battery provided enough shielding for this to survive. Hmm. Well, I'm still not totally reconciled with the with the heat situation. Anyway, back to Space Center. Well, we've got another one of those, but I can't say I'm any more hopeful about that. Upgrades, we have one available fund. Uh, I think we should uh, continue to pump that into R&D to speed things up there. Since that's a huge choke point for us right now. Our technology, 149 days left. So we do have time to do more, more launches. Let's go to the VAB. So really all I can think to do is add fins up here. Uh, there's not going to be much air once we get to these stages. So I don't know what good that would do. We do have these little attitude jets, but without a guidance unit, we're not going to be able to use them. 
we really the best we can do is launch it and hope that it orients properly is basically what we're talking about well I'll, I'll put the extra fins anyway uh, let, let's get them from over here so that they're these 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 are straight I believe but uh, let's just get them from over here okay well itty bitty fins and the reason they have to be itty bitty is so that they don't mess up the center of lift for the rest of the vehicle so that once we get to uh, this stage it's not gonna be having a high center of lift or anything not that in that thin atmosphere is gonna do very much but uh, anyway just on principle we'll call this Nick 3 even though it's not much of an upgrade okay here we are with another Nick 2 and this time I'm gonna try and interfere less and maybe I'll have Smart ASS uh, stop the roll after all. I don't know. Maybe. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's take it as it goes. But I'm gonna try and deviate uh, a lot less than I did last time. Okay, engine ignition and launch. Test flight only has the AJ-10 in mind. Doesn't look like Smart ASS is controlling roll, so I'm gonna take it off the job actually. This one seems to have a lot more roll. Okay, booster set. Alright, there goes the noise. Alright. Uh, letting it run without SAS seems like a bad idea. There's something not quite balanced about this vehicle. It seems to want to go to one side or another. Okay, set. And ignition. Alright, ignition looks good. Now this doesn't have the fins on the upper stages, so... Well, what can we do? Let's just have this point prograde if it can doesn't seem to be going there seems to be too focused on the roll nope even without uh, the roll being maxed out it doesn't seem to want to point prograde or is this overall prograde? no it's not point prograde no matter what so even without SAS, this stage still seems to point in this general direction. We're short of orbit. We don't have enough Delta V for orbit right now. Okay, set. And ignition. Still starts to deviate. Something about this upper stage isn't quite balanced. Well, so far better in orientation than before. And now we're getting a little bit of skew. At least we're going up instead of down. Uh, but we might go backwards pretty soon. 300 kilometers, it says, is what we need next, which is, of course, we've outstripped that before, but it hadn't g given us the target before. Ah, oh, and we're short of the 5,000. Oh, well, it says uh, uncrewed speed record of 5,000. I guess that's orbital. We are beyond 5,000 orbital. Let's see if we get beyond 300 kilometers here. At least get that done. Okay, we got it above 300 kilometers. Next one is 400 kilometers. Will it uh, accept this vessel as passing that target? Yes, it does. Okay, well, 
uh, next speed record is basically orbit. 7,000 meters per second is, uh, well, we'd only be falling very close, uh, very, very shy of orbit if we don't actually make orbit going that fast. Okay. Well, let's head back down. Let's see how it survives or does not survive. Definite heating. Okay, the probe core. No, the probe core is still there. It doesn't have any electric charge anymore. I mean, it's maxed out its temperature, but the probe core doesn't seem to have uh, exploded. Everything else did, except for the nose cone. Well, closer to orbit than before. Still having trouble, though. Wonder if the Nick 3 will do any better. I'm not gonna queue up another rocket right now. Let's just try out the Nick 3. I'm I don't wanna spend more funds unless I can assess that one first. I don't see what we can do before getting this technology otherwise. Okay, here we are testing Nick 3, throttle up, SAS on. I'm not too sure about using Smart ASS since it can't deal with the roll very well. So here we go. Okay, booster set. And now I can talk. Trouble is that we really don't need the roll during the first stage. Really, we really wanted to spin up on the second stage, but there's not enough air in the second. St uh, when we get to the second stage, but uh, this spin up doesn't really help me as far as the flight path is concerned. The flight path is horrible thanks to spinning, and I can't really control it very well. Okay, set and ignition. Maybe we should just go for a height record. We've actually got... well, no, we don't have enough Delta V to get to orbit. Wish Prograde would work. Doesn't even vaguely. SAS doesn't seem to understand the gimbling on this engine. Smart ASS doesn't either, judging from previous launches. Ridiculously reliable engine though, uh, 31 minutes before failure. No problems on that one. I don't want to have SAS on before SEP because uh, it's going to have some residual like attempt to control things and that'll spin the top part out of control. We've got a residual thingamajig. Oh well. Okay, I've had enough of these two stages, so uh, why don't I just give up on this puppy? That was not going to break any speed or height records anyway. 113 days until we get this technology. Clock's ticking. Okay, this is probably just a ridiculous thing, but I want to see what happens with this rocket when we just don't have the guidance unit. So, it saves the mass, obviously. Um, it doesn't really have enough thrust to weight ratio at the base to make me happy. It does have fins. Uh, we should probably increase the size of those fins if we really wanted to. Maybe... Like that. But, I'm just curious. It's sheer curiosity. So, Nick Zero. And we'll build this one. Alright, so here's the Nick Zero. No SAS, no guidance. We're just hoping it flies straight and we'll stage when appropriate. Okay, that is the plot. Here we go. Not 
looking good. Not looking good. Okay, well, at least it didn't hit any of the facilities, but yep, alright, well, that that's that curiosity answered. So, uh, let's just finish up this technology. I don't see us going to orbit without it. Okay, let's see what I can build. Okay, so here's what I've come up with. At the top here, you see the nose cone and then the Able Delta Avionics package, which can carry up to 8 tons on its own. It does have uh, the basic control, but it doesn't have SAS, so that's going to be interesting. Um, don't know what to do about that. We could slap on this Explorer 1 probe, but that probably needs to be in a fairing which would add mass. It's possible. Let me think about that for a sec. Uh, this has SAS, but it doesn't have any avionics, <laughs> which is the irony. So uh, maybe these two should go together. This isn't too heavy. Maybe uh, replacing nose cone with a fairing and putting this inside would be the way to go. But anyway, let me describe the rest of it. Most of my work has been getting the right amount of delta V. Now, I've kept to the the indicated uh, burn time, the rated burn time. So you see here, 2 minutes and 5 seconds. That's because it says uh, 125 seconds for every variant of the Air B sustainer. Uh, the variant that I've chosen is the XASR, as we had before. So, uh, yep, we've got one on the top stage, four on the second stage, as, as we had before. Now, and we have the settling rockets, as usual. One thing we've added are these attitude jets, and that's so that the avionics package can control this. Now, we don't have a lot of choices in terms of fuel. We lack tech for HTP, we lack tech for hydrazine. And so our current configuration was, is with nitro, uh, nitrous oxide, which is the best thing we could do. And I have no idea how much nitrous oxide to pack. I've put it here. So here's our nitrous oxide here. And here's nitrous oxide on this stage. Because this also has attitude jets to help control it. But how much we need? No clue. So that's going to be a tough part. This upper portion is only 4.5 tons. So much less than the 8 ton capacity of the Able Delta. Then we have this guidance unit for the rest of the rocket. And this guidance unit has SAS and it can carry up to 45 tons so that is positive it's also got its own little exp science experiment but I don't think we'll get to that this time around uh, not for the first launch anyway now the tricky part is that the next stage is a Vanguard booster now the Vanguard is a ground start booster and I'm using it as an air start now it does have good ISP for that purpose so that's a positive uh, but the reason I'm using it here is simply because of thrust reasons. Anyway, we do have settling rockets, so that but they only burn for a second, so I'll have to be quick on the ignition. But yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out whether that's going to work out in that role. Which means at the bottom we've got the most powerful rocket we have at our disposal, which is this RD-103. Now, it doesn't have particularly good ISP. Uh, it does have vectoring range, which is good. It burns ethanol and hydrogen, I mean oxygen, which is why it doesn't have the high ISP. Uh, this is a kerosene burning engine. And that about sums it up. The plus side is that um, we don't have the eight boosters making all that noise at the beginning, frankly. Minus, for the RD-103, we don't have the test flight configuration, so that's a little bit of a problem. We really need that. So, uh, yeah, so we're not going to have test flight operant on this, which is, uh, well, what can I do? Uh, I, I could add a conf config, but I haven't planned that far ahead. So we'll just run it like this and see what happens first. Okay, so just be aware that this is not a test flight uh, controlled sort of situation. 
All, uh, even this engine, this Vanguard, isn't uh, test flight configured. The, and actually the XASRs aren't either, but presumably it's because we did all that testing on the base variant of the Air B that uh, we don't have to do it anymore on this variant. Okay, I think that about says it all. We have, as you see, well, uh, once I get the fairings on, we'll have less than this. Let me uh, take a look at uh, how much delta V we lose if we switch the Explorer plus uh, procedural fairing. Actually, it looks like we gain a lot of delta V like that. So we've got an Explorer probe inside the fairing. And I figure that that means that the nose cone is a little bit too heavy, this small nose cone. It does have better max temperature, but seems like it's too heavy for its purpose if fairings actually weigh less. Oh well, anyway, let me get the rest of the fairings on and we'll see what the actual delta V is. You know, we've got 9,541, which is pretty darn good. Maybe I should sneak some science instruments on this. Yeah, let me uh, toss, let's see, what, what have we got? I've unlocked a few new ones. We've got the Geiger counter and micrometeorite detector. This has a temperature experiment, a radiation thing, and a telemetry and impact data. Lots of stuff in there. So we don't need uh, temperature or radiation, which means those two. And this micrometeorite is the impact data. Pressure data, uh, we, we know it's not biome dependent, so it's not the greatest thing to add. The only thing we could add is the biological sample and that has to be returned. So I guess we'll, I guess it's already got all the experiments we would want. That's nifty. Uh, yeah, maybe we should action group those. Mm, wow, we got a lot of stuff here. Well, it's got Smart ASS Panic. We got the Panic button as well. Okay, we'll have Analyze Telemetry. Record Impact Data. Log Temperature. Log Radiation Data. Okay. Well, just goes to show, do use the Explorer probe. Okay, I've called this capable because on a play as a play on able, since the, we've got the able delta avionics package up there. So there's the capable one, and I guess we're ready to try it out. So yeah, uh, it's not too much more expensive than our previous rocket, the Nick. So that's good. Let's build some. Uh. This vessel did not pass the editor checks until you upgrade the VAB and or launch pad it cannot be launched. Mass limit, mass limit exceeded. Oh, what's the mass limit? Oh, I didn't want to click on it. I wanted to right click on it. I didn't even realize we had passed it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I was so focused. Okay, okay. I was so focused on the mass limit on the guidance that I didn't notice. Max vessel weight 45, 40 tons. Really, it's uh, bigger than 40 tons? Let me just double check that. I want to check that there isn't a bug that we had in the previous version of Realism Overhaul. In the previous previous version of Realism Overhaul, there were certain parts that, uh, procedural parts, that didn't have the right mass. Well, this is 36.1 tons according to the engineer report here. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of a problem. Uh, this says 35.68, this says 36.1 tons. I'm, I'm under the limit. So I don't know what's going on. And you know, if the launch clamps are added, let's, I mean, I think this already adds the launch clamps, but let's say uh, it adds the launch clamps again. They're only 0.1 tons, there's four of them. That still only brings it to 36.5. So that's 40 tons. Upgrading it will bring it to 700 tons. And it definitely said the mass was the problem. It didn't say the size. And actually our size doesn't come anywhere close to that. I don't want to spend another 75,000 funds to upgrade it when we, we don't have enough for too many launches like this. And let me just see if it's really mass limit exceeded. Let me double check our height and all. Yeah, I mean, it's all good. There's no part limit. 
As you see, uh, Realism Overhaul removes that. I mean, the, this huge tank is uh, 19 tons, so I think I think the mass is reading properly here. It's just not working with the launch pad properly. Well, I want to get to orbit, so I guess I'll just have to upgrade the launch pad. Okay, this is by no means fair, but here we go, upgrade. Now will you allow me to roll this out? No. Oh wait, wait. Oh, it's because we have to wait for it to upgrade the facility. Well, first of all, I, 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 let me check how much time we have left. We've got 301 days. This is going to take 209 days to upgrade the launch pad. Okay, well, what can I do? But will it work? Considering it's not being honest about my max capacity in the first place. Okay, warp to complete. Now we're getting into risky territory here. We've lost a lot of funds. Our contract is coming up soon. Okay, now can we roll it out? Okay, well, at least it works now. Alright, we'll have a launch after all. Okay, well, there's uh, not much to say except uh, cross your fingers, folks. Our space program might be at an end pretty soon if this rocket doesn't work. Um, we don't have too much time to build new ones. Alright, here we go, engine ignition. And... We've got a launch. Gonna hand over to Smart ASS here. We don't have a roll issue after all. I mean, the the main issue is whether I've got enough nitrous oxide to keep the upper stages stable. That's probably the biggest thing on my mind at this point. Oh, and then uh, whether the Vanguard can can ignite properly. Okay, RD-103 looking good here. Burning ethanol in oxygen. I do intend to try and use KOS at least for launches later on, but uh, frankly the launches at this point are a little bit too interesting, so I'll, I'll keep control for now. Okay, getting ready for separation. Okay, set, and ignition. Oh, shoot! Whoa! That did not work out right. Nope. That did not work out right at all. I'm gonna have to review the video on that, but uh... The tank failed due to aerodynamic stress, I think, is the main thing. Maybe we should hot stage it? I don't know. Maybe we should hot stage it. Let's try the other one. Maybe we should also have better boosters to to help out. Hmm. Well, this isn't going anywhere. I don't know. Can we do science of any kind? Oh, there we go. Micrometeorite detection. And uh, Geiger counter. Well, at least we got those. Still going up. Hmm, I want to see about the nitrous oxide usage and, uh... Well, I guess there's nothing surprising there. It didn't uh, use as much nitrous oxide as I expected. Maybe I need more thrusters there, actually. Might be helpful to have more of them. Of course, right now we're in the atmosphere still. They're not really meant for that. Okay, I'm just gonna abandon this.
Maybe I should revamp this this one. Let's let's see if we can edit this capable one. Yeah, I want bigger, longer lasting boosters to sell the fuel down here. And maybe I should add some fins. Let's double check our center of lift. Ah, center of lift is higher. Let's uh, decrease this. Oh, no, that's not right. Yep, center of lift is just totally wrong in general. This makes sense to me. Now, maybe the baby sergeants would be better off than the... Well, the separation motors have the actual thrust. Oh, now uh, these baby sergeants have PSPC. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. Let's see now. Let me take these off. Six seconds. Not much thrust, actually. Maybe we'll have eight of them after all. I'm so worried about this stage that I'll even put these little guys too. Well, I told you it'll be a trick to get the Vanguard to light properly. Still wondering about hot staging it. We'll try this and then we'll try a hot stage variant. Oh, let me call this capable 2. Save edits. We'll take another three days for that. How much longer do we have on the contract? Got 91 days. Well, I think I have to end this episode here. There's been a disappointment in many respects. Uh, so, yeah. I'll wait until the next episode to try this out again. Once again, trying for orbit. We've got three days to wait here to revamp that capable. And we'll see if it really is capable. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.